Hello, and welcome to the Story Club. I'm Faith Moore, and I think it's time we had a little chat about commas. Commas are confusing. They're used for a lot of different things, and there aren't always hard and fast rules about them. Much as I would like to take you through every single potential usage of the comma, you would probably rather do anything else. So instead, I'll just give you a few general tips that might make commas a bit easier to use. Feel free to drop additional questions in the comments. You often hear that a comma indicates a pause. Not quite as big a pause as a period, but a pause nonetheless. A sort of baby pause, if you will. But this is confusing because when we hear that, we often think about the pauses we make when speaking. But those pauses are often unique to us or the situation. And some pauses actually don't warrant a comma. It's best instead to think of commas as more of a break a visual way to break up text so that it becomes easier for your reader to understand. If you are someone who tends to throw commas around willy-nilly because, as you're writing, you hear a pause in your head, it's time for a comma detox. Stop doing that. There is a better way. In general, you want to use a comma if indicating a break in that particular place will help your reader understand the sentence better. And relatedly, if not having a comma there might cause them to misunderstand it or get tripped up. For example, commas are generally used for introductory phrases, like, before we could start eating, a snake fell from the ceiling onto my plate. Without the comma, it's possible you're talking about eating a snake. Even if it's not going to completely change the meaning, a comma after an introductory phrase can break up a sentence so your reader reads it correctly. Like, after the snake landed on my plate, I wasn't that hungry anymore. I do want to acknowledge that in these examples, and in many of the other examples I'll give along the way, there is an actual pause after the comma, and it is that pause that helps the sentence make more sense. It's the difference between before we could start eating, a snake fell from the ceiling, and before we could start eating a snake. But my point still stands, because not all pauses require a comma, so you can't just drop one in every time the voice in your head takes a breath. Another common reason to use a comma is parentheticals. A parenthetical is a phrase which adds additional information to the sentence, but if it was removed, wouldn't alter the meaning of the sentence. For example, in the sentence I just said, if it was removed was a parenthetical. So I would offset it with commas, one before and one after the parenthetical. Again, this helps break up the sentence into meaningful chunks so your reader doesn't get tripped up. You might pause at the commas while saying that sentence, but also you might not. The commas are helpful either way. You've probably heard that if you have more than one adjective in a row, you should separate them with a comma. For example, an engrossing, well-written book is hard to find. But this is only true for coordinate adjectives, meaning adjectives that can be switched around without changing the meaning. A well-written engrossing book is hard to find would also work. So you separate the adjectives with commas so your reader understands those adjectives are two separate ideas. You don't necessarily pause between them though. Just saying. If the adjectives are not coordinate, you don't need a comma. For example, the large black cat stared down from the bookshelf. You wouldn't say the black large cat, so a comma between large and black would create an unnecessary break, which would trip your reader up. A good example of a time when you might hear a pause, but you don't use a comma is the comma splice. If what is on either side of a comma could stand alone as its own sentence, you've created a comma splice. And comma splices are not allowed because rules. For example, you might say, it was raining, I took my umbrella, because in your head, that's one thought with a pause in the middle. But actually, that's two sentences. It was raining, and I took my umbrella. The thoughts are related though, so guess what? You get to use a semicolon. It was raining, I took my umbrella. If you don't like semicolons, you could just write it as two sentences, or you could add a conjunction. It was raining, so I took my umbrella. Perhaps the most common reason to use a comma is to separate items in a list. But now we come to the great comma debate, to Oxford comma or not to Oxford comma. The Oxford comma, or serial comma for those who don't want to name drop, refers to a comma placed between the penultimate item in a list and the word and. For example, 
This video is helpful, informative, and interesting. The comma between informative and and is the Oxford one. Technically, you don't have to put a comma there. You can leave it out and still be correct. But without it, you do open yourself up to all sorts of hilarious misunderstandings, because without the Oxford comma, the last two items in the list might be viewed as one entity. For example, at the zoo, I saw my parents, a rhino and a hippo is a list of people and animals you saw at the zoo. Whereas at the zoo, I saw my parents, a rhino and a hippo, implies that you were raised by two large, gray, thick-skinned mammals. If you want my personal opinion, use the Oxford comma. Every time. Please. Because a comma is a visual break that helps you understand a sentence better, and that's exactly what it does here. Commas are also a necessary element when punctuating dialogue or quotations. I have a whole other video specifically about that, so I'm not going to go over that again here. I'll link to that video in the description of this one. But I will just note that I've received several questions about whether or not commas can be used to indicate pauses in dialogue when writing fiction. The answer to that is no. As I've been saying, a comma isn't really that kind of pause. For pauses in speech, use ellipses. Okay, I think that's enough about commas for now. There are a lot more reasons you might use or not use commas though. So if you've got a specific question, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you. Also, if you want to hire me to edit your work, I'd love to hear from you. I offer a variety of editing services, which you can learn all about by visiting my website. You'll find a link in the description of this video. I hope you'll reach out. I'd love to work with you. In the meantime, happy writing.